uh, when you find that manuscript, so this less than 10 times a year, probably closer to one to two to five, uh, you find something, it must be mine. It's amazing. It's a, a fiction picture book about ancient aliens and cancer. I got to have this. Uh, what happens next? How do you evaluate an author? And at that point, when you're that in love with the manuscript, are there things that authors can do and have done that make you say, oh, wait, never mind? Um, yes, but it's not so much like a you messed up buddy kind of thing. Um, if there's a project that I really, really love, I will schedule a call with the author to talk to them about it. Um, talk about, you know, what kind of career they're ideally looking to have, what kind of books they want to write, if they want to stay in that genre, um, you know, what they're looking for in an agent, um, you know, what their sort of expectations are, what their communication style is, what kind of feedback they're expecting, that kind of stuff. Uh, and if if their answers to those things don't necessarily align with how I do things, then that might make me pause and say, oh, okay, maybe this isn't the perfect thing. Um, and that's something also that I think that authors should be doing as well, too. Because I know sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm saying that out of the hundreds of queries I get, I only take on, you know, a few every year. And that sucks. And I know that. Um, and, you know, querying and writing and revising and all of that is just a long, arduous process. Um, that sometimes when an agent says, hey, you, you're just like, oh, awesome, great. And you don't really think about it afterwards. But, you know, if that agent, um, so for instance, I am much more of an email person than a phone person, just because I guess I'm a millennial. Um, but I do do phone calls for like brainstorming sessions, stuff like that. But I tend to like to talk through big picture ideas with an author instead of saying, okay, this is what's wrong, this is how you should fix it. I like sort of talking about what's wrong and what I think might potentially move it in the right direction. I like leaving it up to the author to decide the actual sort of nitty gritties of how they're going to get that done. Um, if you are an author who likes more concrete suggestions or direction, then I might not be the best fit for you. Um, so I think if, you know, if you have a different communication style or different expectations about feedback um, or the kind of relationship you're going to have, if you have an agent that doesn't really match up with that, you're going to end up being sort of disappointed because you're not really going to be getting the experience that you wanted out of it. Um, and it goes, you know, vice versa. So if I say I don't need an agent that's going to talk to me on the phone at least an hour every night. Uh, and it's going to be at every author event I ever do to hold my hand and tell me I'm good enough. That's probably not you. Is, um, is there any agent out there that that is? I mean, I'd have to be selling a lot of books to justify that investment of time, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's not necessarily even just like a difference in um, in attention or like amount of time spent. It's like also sort of community. So I am not like super formal when I do communications back and forth. That's why. I don't necessarily have like a structured do this, do that sort of thing. I like just leaving it's like open-ended suggestions. Um, you know, when I'm brainstorming with people, I like to talk about sort of more meta ideas as opposed to sort of like little micro issues. Um, I leave it up to authors usually to determine what direction they want to take their career in um, because in my opinion, you know, it's, it's their career, it's their vision. I'm there to help them do something. If I think that they're making a gigantic mistake or that something is really going to just, you know, bomb and not work, I will tell them. Um, but, you know, if you are a contemporary client of mine, but you just really, really strongly feel that you want to move into YA fantasy, I would tell you right now, YA fantasy is a super hard sell because people bought a ton of it last year um, and now they're kind of backing away from it. But I wouldn't force you to not write that way, fantasy. Um, other agents can, um, other agents are similar, or they can have a much more structured view of how they think an author's career should go. Um, so they're just, I mean, it's just, you know, sort of like being friends with someone, you know? It's, it's a similar sort of give and take. You wanna see how you're similar, how you're different, how you'll mesh together, what kind of working relationship you ha you'll have, um, you know, in the same way that you sort of, I, I shouldn't say choose a friend, because that sounds super cheesy, <laughs> but maybe, a, a job yeah no i mean taking on uh, five less than 10 clients per year they, 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 it makes sense that you'd want to i'm assuming you're keeping that number that low so that you can really focus and devote your total attention and time to them right mm -hmm. 
so let's do that side of the coin. Um, I, I pass all the tests. I don't come off like a total psycho when we talked the first time. Um, and we agree that our styles are pretty similar. We're probably going to get along famously. Um, uh, what, uh, well, let me, two questions. Um, because before I forget, I want to ask you if my book is pretty good, not 100% there, and you don't know if the market's going to take it or not. It's a YA fantasy, so it's kind of hard already. And it's got a couple of elements that are, eh, we'll see. I know that they mean a lot to me, but they're not maybe what the market's looking for. Are you willing to take me on as a client in the hopes that if this doesn't work, we'll take a flyer on this. And the second book that you're going to help me with a little bit will be better and, and more attuned to the market? Or do you have time for something like that? Well, what I would like you do is ask you to do some RNR elements that I don't think are working in your manuscript to see if you're able to revise up to a level that, you know, I'm asking for. Um, I would also honestly have a frank conversation and just be, say, you know, listen, I think that you're a great writer. You know, you're great at revising. You know, we've talked. I really like your ideas for your other books. But to be honest, I am like 90% sure that I'm going to have a really, really hard time selling this. You know, if that's the case, are you fine with putting it down and doing something else that maybe isn't in the fantasy genre? Or if you really want to stay in fantasy, but you downgrade it to middle grade fantasy, or not downgrade, but, you know, um, change it to middle grade fantasy. Um, and for some authors, that answer might be no. Uh, I know that sometimes, you know, because you've invested so much in a project, it's hard to let it go and toss it or and to do something completely different. Um, and that's fine. And that's just, you know, an a moment when we know that we're not really matching up in terms of visions and directions. So anybody that's on your client list currently doesn't need to worry that they're the one that you took their project but weren't really expecting great things until they write the next one. You would have told them right up front, right? I would have told them. Um, so I really like to talk to potential clients about their career goals as a whole. Um, you know, because sometimes I get uh, especially in the children's world, I feel like people jump genres a lot. So I'll get a middle grade manuscript that I really, really love. But when I talk to that author, like, yeah, that was that middle grade idea that just been like really sticking in my head and, you know, reminding me of my childhood or whatever. And, but I actually really want to do YA fantasy too, like a bunch. Um, that's something that I kind of want to know beforehand so we can talk it through. Um, but when I, when I do sign people, it's because I've talked to them about their career as a whole. And I feel like that's something that I can help them with. Not just like one project. Well, let's have that conversation a little bit then. Um, what are what are reasonable career goals for a soon to be debut author, uh, and what are you hoping? What what sort of career are you hoping to shepherd? Well, I think career goals obviously not like New York Times bestseller and make millions of dollars because that's all of our goals. We all share that. Um, but, all the awards. <laughs> yes, all the awards. Money <laughs> done. Um, but when I'm talking about career goal, like what kind of career you're looking to have, um, you know, you could say, I I really love writing fantasy. I like writing middle grade and YA. So I think I'd like to do both of those things. And, you know, I'm really looking to do, you know, I don't know, stories that revolve around like female empowerment, especially because sometimes in fantasy, you know, the girls are always just like the damsel in distress. And I don't like that. So I was thinking that maybe we would do some like sort of feminist version of, you know, popular fairy tales, which is retellings, which I wouldn't actually, oh, actually, no, I would like that one. That sounds fun. Um, you know, do you think that I can do something like that? Uh, like that would be my author brand, like female empowerment and fantasy. And then I'll be like, I'll be like oh, I can get on board. Um, you know, if you're a little bit more scattered or a little bit more scattered in terms of like, I think that maybe I'd also like to write a romance or maybe like a children's picture book. Then I'm going to get like a little, Wah. let's try and focus you in a little bit here. Um, but on the other end of the scale, if you say, you know, I don't know, I haven't thought about my career. I just want to sell this book. Then I'm also going to say, okay, maybe you should step back and, and think about what happens if you don't sell this book. Um, sorry, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, absolutely. I'm going to, there, there's no such thing as over answer. You keep going. <laughs> I want to hear everything you have to say. Um, so if I, I come at you and I um, uh, and I do have just this one book um, and I don't have any goals uh, for a future, what what should an author ideally want? I mean, something between I want to be J.K. Rowling, when will Universal open the amusement park featuring my characters? Uh, and I want to sell five books, six books. What is a reasonable answer to that question? Well, I think it's a different 
So when you're talking about being Jacob Rowling or selling five books, I mean, I think that it's understood that every author wants to be the most famous and best selling that they can be. And so does your agent. Your agent doesn't want you to sell like five copies of your books. Um, I think it is more about sort of your mindset when it comes to um, your mindset when it comes to how you want your career to progress, how you envision being involved in that career thing. Um, you know, if you've only written one book, but you haven't really thought about what you want your author brand to be, per se. Um, what I am looking to hear is that you're not just going to be stubbornly holding on to that one book and not trying other things. I like hearing that you're willing to collaborate, you're open to ideas. Um, and that also you've done at least a little bit of thinking about your actual author brand marketing and publicity and, you know, what what you can do in those arenas and not just the writing. Because writing is obviously incredibly important, but it's also not the only hat that authors wear nowadays, as I'm sure everybody knows. I mean, every, authors are involved in marketing publicity now and promotional ideas, um, all that kind of stuff. That's important to think about. 